This is going to be a Clyde Slide soap. I have not made one of those before. I've admired them uh, on other people's uh, YouTube sites, including Clyde himself, a vibrant soap. It's a beautiful method. So I'm looking forward to trying it. I'm going to use um, naturally colored clays um, in bright colors uh, similar to what I used in the first corner pour video that I made. Here's my recipe, which is coconut oil, olive oil, RSPO palm oil, and high oleic sunflower oil. That should give a nice, slow-moving um, soap batter. I'm going to use some sodium lactate in it, as I've often done, to harden it a little and make it come out of the mold easier. I have already mixed all the batters. Um, I've done that in numerous other uh, videos, so I'm not going to redo it here. So now I'm going to pour the Clyde slide, which just means almost like an in-the-pot swirl, but uh, with each color going into the center of the previous color. Even though I have uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, rainbow colors, I'm not doing them in that order. I'm doing them in in um, contrasting order. Red is Australian red reef clay with some white kaolin. This green is French green clay. Orange is French red clay plus some Brazilian uh, gold clay. The purple is Brazilian purple clay. The yellow is Brazilian gold clay. And the blue is, again, French green clay with some woad powder added. This batter is just barely a trace. It's a uh, vegan recipe with RSPO palm oil, which is hopefully somewhat sustainable. to keep enough of this batter to um, decorate the top of the soap. But I'll use most of it here. Do my last round of the mixture this time. Just keep a little bit for drizzling on the top. All right, that's ready to pour. So 
here is my mold. I'm just going to pour it lengthways back and forth. Using a fragrance oil here that's new to me. It is Apple Macintosh from Brambleberry, and it's really a nice fresh apple scent. I think I'm going to like it. scrape the excess soap out of these containers into a small mold, but I don't want to take time to do that right now because this is definitely thickening quite a lot. Now I'm just going to swirl this very shallowly to make a nice pattern in it, going in maybe half an inch. This soap is about six hours old. I put it in an oven at about 135 Fahrenheit for uh, three hours and then let it cool down from there. Um, uh, I've tried that with some other soaps at somebody's suggestion um, for a silicone lined mold uh, to avoid the bubbles that you get when you see pop at 170 degrees. So uh, hopefully this will be fine. I think I will leave it still overnight before I try to unmold it. It's still pretty soft. It is the next day and this soap is ready to be unmolded and cut. I always think when I do a loaf mold that I probably should invest in a real soap cutter, but I do so few loaf mold soaps that uh, I never get around to buying one. So I'm going to make a couple of pieces that are the traditional loaf of bread shape or slice of bread shape and then I'm going to do some that are more um, like a commercial bar of soap shape which as I've said in other videos I actually prefer although to get the full effect of, of the pattern I kind of need that shape so if I go over here wide enough to make a 
regular um, commercial shaped bar of soap. And then that'll cut into two. So what was the top of the mold is over here. So one of them is going to get that pretty Taiwan squirrel pattern on the top. The other one is going to have the cut on the top, and I'll show a close-up of that later. I'm not measuring these, but I'm assuming those are going to be probably four and a half ounce bars. So here is um, one of these slice of bread shaped pieces, kind of a muted color pattern. There's the top and the sides that were against the mold wall. And the other one that was done that way. glary. And then the ones that were trimmed to be more standard bar of soap shape. There's a top side. That was a cut side. Uh, wall of the mold side. Got a little bit of uh, the uh, silicone surface uh, bubbles there. I'll have to trim those off. That was a cut side. And then this was the horizontal cut to make a second bar beneath it. And here is that second bar. So that's now the top of that bar and the sides. And another one of those. I like that top pattern. was the cut horizontally. It seems to be very predominantly blue and I'm not seeing a lot of true green at all. I think my um, French green clay must have mixed with something next to it to look blue, even the part I didn't use any woad in. That one's more swirly. Of course, I'll have to trim these corners. And the top of the lower bar in that case. There you can see about how deep that uh, top layer for decoration was. Cut horizontal surface. And then the bar that was just underneath that. <laughs> Seems like in a lot of my videos I end up saying, well this is not what I expected but I like it anyway. I think I have to do that again. Uh, I was thinking we might get a little more definition of colors than this, but it's an interesting kind of a mosaic look to it, which I do like.